Oh boy, it's Friday, time for another one of our free weekly community classes. This week is actually uh, more of an opinion, an op-ed, uh, in response to the fact that in the last couple of years I've probably had 10 or 15 people ask me why I don't talk openly about astro-herbalism, right? This is kind of a hot thing right now. Uh, astrology is really hot right now. Herbalism is really hot right now. So astro-herbalism, um, kind of the perfect storm. For folks who don't know what this is, it's the idea that uh, your astrological signature, your chart, if you will, uh, and please be patient with me and forgiving because I know next to nothing about astrology outside of herbalism. So I may get some of this wrong, but you'll understand what I'm talking about. Uh, that the astrological chart, one's astrological chart can give insight into the places where that person needs uh, healing and can work with herbs uh, that way. So it can act as a constitutional diagnostic tool when it's done by really expert people. This is something you almost never see. The flip side is that herbs can be assigned a planet or a zodiac sign as a way to understand some of their deeper uh, personality traits, their temperaments. Again, something you rarely actually see people do, um, which is what we're gonna get into here in a minute. So uh, lots of folks ask about astral herbalism. This is gonna be my, uh, the plan is to give you my two cents, but it'll probably be closer to a dollar uh, <laughs> worth of opinion. Um, first things first, and you know, this is very important for me to get out right out of the gate. I respect the hell out of astro herbalism. Uh, when it is in the hands of people who truly understand the mysteries, they really understand what's happening. This can be one of the most accurate um, diagnostic tools you'll find and a very powerful way to connect with the plant spirits. That being said, there are very few people that talk about it on that level. It generally comes to folks after decades of experience, uh, not only with the planets, uh, but with the relationships that astrology explores, kind of shows us the map of relationships, and then of course the plant spirits. So it's a ton of work, it adds a lot of work, and very few people uh, have much expertise at it. What we generally see is folks who know a little bit and uh, find the accuracy in the little bit and so kind of go gung-ho about it um, and then kind of recycle the same information over and over again. But in the hands of an expert, uh, this stuff is incredible. And we, I would be remiss not to mention that there are traditions of herbalism that are heavily influenced by astrology. Uh, Ayurveda being the biggest one, right? The way that Ayurveda as a spiritual science and Jyotish as a spiritual science can dovetail, again, in the hands of an expert, is stunning. Um, I have had the, the privilege of having my chart read through the lens of Jyotish uh, and look how it lines up with the herbs that I work with and the herbs that I should work with uh, through that particular tradition. And I got to tell you, uh, it's a stunner right? But uh, this was from somebody who was born and raised in India, uh, somebody of Southeast Asian descent that is deeply invested in the culture, deeply invested in the subtleties and nuances of symbolism, who could unpack this for me in a way uh, that worked for me. So, um, you know, a little nudge there of why I also don't talk about Ayurveda. It's not in my lane. But much respect to all those traditions because holy cow, uh, no pun intended, if you have the opportunity to sit with somebody who knows that work, knows that language well, the language of astrology and the language of herbs, oh boy, don't pass it up. So, a couple of things. First and foremost, reasons I don't practice astral herbal herbalism. First, um, I am an animist. I'm a hardline animist uh, and a hardline polytheist. And the reason why this comes up with astral herbalism is that for me as an animist, if I am unable to connect and work with, in a sorceress way, the planets as persons, 
work with the ruling spirit, uh, the lords and ladies, the gods and goddesses of individual planets, then rather than leaning deeper into my animism, I'm actually perverting it. I'm actually skewing it and reducing the planets to uh, archetypal forces, impersonal influences over my life, and that's just not the way this works. Uh, in fact, the people who generally do this really well are the people who are in fact in personal relationship um, with the planets to bring up Ayurveda again because there's really no better example on the planet that I'm aware of that uh, people who practice Jyotish are often in a direct relationship, often a direct relationship of devotion to the Navgraha, the nine planets, right? They are going to temples dedicated to these nine deities, uh, doing rituals around working with these nine deities. Uh, they are in, in relationship with them. And so the animism, the spirit of Jyotish comes alive for the person because rather than it being reductionist, a set of this planet does this in somebody's chart, uh, they are getting gnosis, right? They are getting um, direct downloads from those persons who are related to the planet. So um, for me, I would need to have a pretty dramatically different background as far as academic and learning and study and experience to practice astro herbalism because I am not in relationship to the planets at all uh, with the exception of Earth, Moon, and Sun, who I do some ritual work with. They are deities that are active in the Pantheon, the hearth tradition that I work with. Uh, outside of that, I think, um, personally, those planets are so far away and so far removed from the goings-on of what I do here every day that I've never felt inclined to call on them and I've never felt called by them. So uh, it would go against my animistic principles to you know, do astro herbalism if I was not in deep relationship with the planets. Um, and maybe there are ruling deities over all of the astrological science too. There might be a, a goddess of Libra, got, you know, Venus, whatever, um, which you, the person would then need to be in a deep sorceress ritual based relationship of reciprocity with that person in order to make it work um, well. So you will see me looking down. I have a post-it note today because uh, this is one of those topics, like if I don't give myself a syllabus, we'll just somehow end up uh, talking about bread recipes by the end of it instead of staying on point. So um, another issue that I find with astro herbalism, and this comes more like if I wanted to learn it, right? If I wanted to get into it, uh, save going investing myself in Indian, Southeast Asian culture and learning it through them. If somebody would be willing to teach me, that's a different thing. But here, being a, an American in America, um, is that generally when I see astral herbalism, it's just straight up reductionist, right? So it goes back into the toxic pattern of reductionism. And while that can be crazy accurate and like mind blowing, it doesn't mean that it's right action. It could be right information, but it doesn't mean that it's right action. It doesn't mean that it is harmonious um, and in alignment with the wholeness of things, which is the whole point of animism, right? Um, and so what I see is people doing to the planets, to the astrological signs, the zodiac signs, the same thing they do to herbs and gemstones and deities saying, this planet is good for this. This herb is good for this. This deity is the deity of this. And really putting everybody in this box of things they're good for. Uh, that good for being in relation to the human person. Like, what are, how are you good for me? What can you do for me? What are you good for, right? Which to me, if anybody ever reduced me that way and said like, oh, here's what Josh is good for and didn't honor my personhood, the nuances, the fact that there's more to me than what happens at work, there's more than me, to me than what happens at home, um, I would feel very slighted by that, right? I would feel disrespected, but I would also feel like I wasn't being seen as a person that I was being objectified, right? Or uh, people were trying to find out how they could use me versus relate to me. 
And we have to remember that these big old personalities, these deities and gods and, and all of these big spirits uh, are people too. And so when astral herbalism is taught from this reductionist model, there is a bigger potential of offending the spirits involved. There's a bigger potential that the furthest your work with it will go is what you can learn and memorize from books that other people have written. You'll never surpass your teacher because you're, you're not in relationship with the source of it. So more can't come to you. All you can do is learn lists, right? And that's helpful, but it's not true. Uh, it's not good herbalism and it's not good magic and it's not good astrology, right? That, um, Herbalism and the definition of an herbalist is somebody to whom the plant spirits reveal their secrets. So uh, we could look at that same thing applied to astrology, that an astrologer is someone to whom the planet spirits, the astrological spirits, have revealed their secrets and continue to do so. That it's evolutionary, it's mentor apprentice, it's deity to human relationship or spirit to human relationship. That if you don't have that, you will hit a brick wall. Eventually you will read all the books, take all the notes, memorize all the lists, period. Which means that all you've done is piggybacked off the work of the people who wrote the books or did the classes, right? We want more than that. We want to further everything and take everything, you know, further. We want to honor the uh, our teachers, the ancestral connection to our teachers by taking all the work they've done and pushing it 10 steps further. And then the people we teach honor everything we've done and take it 10 steps further. That's how this works. Um, so usually reductionist. Uh, planets very rarely seen as persons, astrological signs, again, I don't know enough to, to say, but if there are ruling spirits of those, probably wouldn't be surprised. Um, what else? So oftentimes, too, with the, the astral herbalism that I see, you know, mostly on social media, it's very superficial. It's accurate and it hits and people are like, oh my God, that's like so me, right? Then what? Uh, it doesn't go to step two. It doesn't go to the part where the astrology and the herbalism now give that person the invitation to start doing the work. What I end up seeing is people using their astrological chart as an excuse not to do the work, right? And these memes go around, they're super funny, where it's like, you know, uh, sorry, I'm a terrible person, but I have this and this going on in my astrology. So deal with it, right? Uh, which it's funny because it's true. Like people do that all the time. Like, you know, sorry, I'm like that. It's just my astrology. Um, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like the idea that uh, there is some influence from a being, a person that I have no direct relationship that is so strong over me that if I chose to be a different way or react a different way or behave a different way or change myself, I couldn't. Um, that's not animism and it doesn't work well uh, for somebody who wants to engage in community. The idea that some far off distant person, spirit, um, has, has me on puppet strings to the point that if I don't like my behavior or my behavior is not in line with the ways of my community and what I'm trying to do, tough shit. Like there's nothing I can do about it. No, there's always room to change. If you learn nothing else from the plants that they're, they're teaching us that we can adapt, that we can grow and face the sun, um, we can do things differently, right? So these reductionist ways of astrology that people just get to hide behind their chart or not do the work as scary as and, and uncomfortable as it is um you know i don't blame people for shirking the work because it sucks right but i do blame them when they don't just say i don't want to do the work or i'm not ready to do the work right now i choose not to do it now's not a good time and instead say well um you know i'm a libra so <laughs> this is just how it is take it or leave it i don't like that um what else uh, I have so much on my list. I, I do want to give a few resources that I have 
come across that seem really like a little better. Um, not all of them are perfect, but I think that for folks who are coming at this work from an animus perspective, you could really take this and run with it. The first is the most active current teacher that I know that talks a lot about astrology is Seja Popham, uh, Evolutionary Herbalism. I have read his book. I have not done any of his courses. I have met a few people who have taken his um, Astro Herbalism course. Um, none of them are practicing as herbalists, so I haven't been able to see what the efficacy of that looks like, you know, based on his program. Um, but the book was really good and I learned a lot and it was really very interesting to me. Uh, I also love uh, from the more Ayurvedic Jyotish line would be reading Harish Johari's stuff. Uh, very, very cool author. I've read all of his books over the years and really just love not only his artwork, um, but the way he writes is really beautiful. He wrote a book on um, uh, numerology from the Ayurvedic perspective that was just mind-blowing to me. Who else? You could look at uh, Cedars, Occult Botany. This is a really beautiful book. I suggest getting the hard copy version. I will put names and links and everything down in the comments or the info, so don't feel like you have to get all this down. Cedars, Occult Botany, uh, translated book into English, very clear, very easy to read, gets into the planets uh, in a way that I think is the best segue to the animistic expression of astro herbalism that I've seen. It's not obvious, but it's there. Uh, and then finally, um, a book written by one of my late teachers, uh, Paul Barrell, uh, The Master Book of Herbalism and also The Compendium of Herbal Magic, both really beautiful books uh, written from the modern witchcraft perspective. He was a, a pretty much nearly lifelong practitioner of, of Wicca. Uh, but you know, a little more reductionist, a little less animist, and of course he, you know, says master herbalist, which you know I hate. Uh, but what a beautiful book. Um, and for folks that want to, you know, kind of a clean reference, like a, a little little A to Z, something just a little direct, maybe to kind of open the ways a little bit, uh, can't recommend those two books highly enough. So there is good stuff out there. Uh, it's not for me. It's not something you'll probably ever hear me talk about again after this video. <laughs> um, but very cool and very deserving of our respect, especially those traditions uh, that have been going for millennia and, you know, approach the plants as persons, the signs as persons, the plants as persons, the clients as persons. Then we get into the real magic. So, uh, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you next Friday for our next community class. If you want extras, advanced classes, courses, and all that stuff, come hang out with us over on the Patreon to support my work, which I very much appreciate. And until next time, take care.